Hey guys, this is Dave with Gen3D Tech. Today I'm excited to be showing you the new Pulsar X-Lite Wireless V2 and I'll be comparing it to the V1 that I've had for the last few months which has become one of my favorite mice that I use quite often. And if you're a V1 owner, hopefully this video will help you decide whether or not it's worth upgrading to the V2. And if you haven't jumped on the X-Lite bandwagon, hopefully this review will help you decide whether or not this mouse is right for you. Anyways guys, let's check it out. And first off, I'd like to thank Pulsar for providing this uh, review sample to me. This is actually the first review sample that I've, I've gotten. Everything else I've paid for that I've reviewed so far. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know also that this, this was provided to me, but this is not going to affect my opinion and never will affect the opinion um, whenever I'm provided something for free. Uh, I'm going to give you my honest opinion each time, regardless of whether or not I buy it or it's provided to me. But I just thought I'd mention that before we proceed with the rest of the review. And first off, I thought I'd just show you the box that it comes in. It's uh, slightly changed the... Uh, the original one right here is a little harder to open. You can see it's quite a bit taller. And then on the uh, the V2, much shallower box. And uh, it just it has a little bit more of a premium feel when you open it up. It's just those little uh, attentions to detail which, you know, makes this mouse... Uh, and Pulsar in general, just a, a really good company. And just those little things that they do, you know, I think make a difference. So yeah, when you compare the two side by side, they're very, very similar. There's very few changes. On the V1, the biggest difference is on the bottom. You can see that they have this cover right here. And they did this so they could take the battery, which was stacked on top of this uh, PCB over here and they uh, pushed it back here which um, gives it a nice uh, more even weight distribution when you're lifting it you can see it's a little front heavy on the, on the V1 and much more balanced on the V2 so that's a you know whether or not that makes a huge difference when you're gaming it, it makes it just feels a little nicer in your hand and then of course the other obvious difference is this solid siding right here instead of these slits that they have over here and that definitely uh, improves the comfort and grip of the mouse even though it did feel a little uncomfortable my thumb grip wise i never really had a problem with the v1 and you could definitely just put some tape there but that of course uh, increases the uh, weight a little bit the v1's uh 58 grams and the v2 is 59 and honestly i can't tell the difference weight rise that one gram it's just really hard to tell both mice use the same sensor the 3370 which of course is the most common flagship sensor being used right now i would have liked to seen in the v2 the 3395 sensor i think that would definitely encourage more v1 owners to upgrade but their new ambi mouse that's coming out in the summer will have that sensor which is the latest and greatest but honestly the 3370 it's a flawless sensor and the implementation on both of these mice is, is just wonderful. So it's not a huge deal, but you know, just for specs wise, it would just would have been nice to see that. The side buttons pretty much are the same. They got the same type of a dot switch that the Fanatic Bolt uses pretty much, which is not the best sounding. It's probably the weakest thing on both of these mice. They work and I, I do love this, the button placement of these on both the mice which is exactly the same on both mice but as far as the how they feel they're pretty mushy it's definitely something that i'd like to see them improve if they ever come out with another version of this uh argo mouse another thing that's changed is the squirrel wheel it pretty much sounds the same but on the v2 the squirrel wheel has been raised up about a millimeter now does the squirrel wheel being raised make any kind of difference for me i never had a problem with the skull wheel on the v1 but i mean it looks a little nicer being raised up to me but as far as performance there's really no difference in my opinion 
as to the reason for raising the score wheel, apparently um, because it was so low, people were accidentally pressing it when they were pressing the mouse one and two trigger and activating the the mouse click. I can honestly say in all the months I've been using this and I've used this a lot, that's never once happened. But apparently, you know, it happened enough that people complained and they decided to raise it on here. You know, I do think it looks a little nicer that way, but definitely this would not be a reason for me to upgrade if it was just the mouse wheel that had been changed. Uh, again, the sides are probably the biggest reason and then the balance. Also, both mice use the same KL 8.0 switches for mouse one and mouse two. And some people say that the, the clickiness and implementation on the V2 sounds better or, or is different. Honestly, uh, at least on this special edition red copy I have of the V1, they sound exactly the same to me. One nice thing that I always liked is there's just really no side to side movement on either one of them. And uh, be in post travel, very minimal on both of these mice. And of course, both of them use a USB-C since we're looking at that view, which is always nice. Another uh, nice thing about these mice is they're just very minimalistic. There's no uh, DPI button, which actually I kind of would have liked to see in a DPI button. Um, some people, at least on the bottom, I don't mind it when it's on the bottom. Um, some people, uh, when they're on the top, they accidentally hit them, but that's, I don't think I've ever had a mouse that's been a problem for me. I like being able to switch the DPI on the fly, so what I did is in the software, which I'll show you later too, is I bound the, the side mouse button right here uh, to be the, the DPI scroll through. And of course, you know, a, a lot of mice have RGB. They decided to not throw a bunch of RGB on the on their mouse, which I applaud. As you can see, there's just this one light down here and it actually changes with the the DPI settings. And that one little light actually looks pretty cool when it's dark. You just see the light shining through the, through the holes on the top. It's just one little light, very minimal, just enough. And battery life on both of these mice is up to 70 hours, which is, you know, it's not the best, but it's it's pretty decent. While 70 hours is right there in the middle of the pack as far as battery life is concerned on uh, flagship mice. And even if you did run out of battery life, the one nice thing about both of these is the cable. This paracord cable is one of the best cables that's you know that I've gotten with any mice. And if you had to use it, it it totally feels like you're it doesn't have anything on there. It feels exactly like a wireless mouse with this paracord cable. So you're not going to lose anything if you have to plug it in. And, um, and I do have a mouse bungee, but with this, you don't even need it. It's the same cable that comes with the, the V1. So if you have the V1, you're not missing out. It's the exact same cable. It's, it's a great cable. As far as the wireless adapter and, and dongle, they're pretty much the same. They're both very premium feeling and looking. Um, one nice thing though that they did is they actually put the name on the little wireless adapter uh, on the original one. It's just black. And I can't tell you how many times I've ended up mixing these up and not knowing which one it goes to when I've taken it out of this adapter. I have so many wireless mice and half of them are not labeled. I really wish all mouse companies would definitely label their adapters. It just makes it so much easier to track them down. So that little, this little tiny change on the V2 is a, a big plus in my book. Now, as far as the shape, the shape changed a little bit. The shape just fills out your hand just a little bit more than the V1. I didn't have any problem with the, the V1. It actually fit, fits my hand perfectly. So shape wise, uh, I'm not opposed to this change. It just feels a little bit bigger. If I'm being honest, I do like the shape just a hair better on, on the V1. I know most people have preferred the uh, fuller shape of the V2, and I do like it a lot. And overall, if I had to choose one over the other, I'd definitely choose the V2 just because of the sides and the weight balance, but it's really close. In game, I perform pretty much the same. I didn't notice any difference. This is definitely one of my better performing uh, mice in game. Now, and this is definitely an, an you know ergonomic mouse. 
And if you don't like ergonomic mice, you're not going to like this, of course. I do like ergonomic mice, but I also like a good ambi mouse too. So being ergo, it does limit the user base. It also limits it to right-handed players. But like I mentioned earlier, Pulsar is coming out with an ambi mouse with very impressive specs. So people who perform a more ambi style mouse will definitely want to look at that mouse. And also if you're a left-handed uh, mouse user, that's the mouse I'd be looking at if, if you're interested in Pulsar. One thing that impresses me about Pulsar is they've only been around since 2020. And just the things that they've done with this mouse is very impressive. All the little attentions to detail, just, you know, like this PCB that's exposed. They could have easily just left it the normal color and no, they went ahead and painted it, put their logo on there. It's just uh, all these little tiny attentions to details on you know, most people don't look at the bottom of their mouse, but I actually enjoy flipping this thing over just to look at it sometimes. It's one of the things I that drew me to this mouse right here. I, I was very curious. How could a mouse that is all open like this on the bottom have a stable, solid structure? And definitely the V1, when you squeeze it, it's one of the sturdiest mice I've ever felt, which is very surprising to me. If you do squeeze back here, you will actuate mouse 1 and mouse 2, and that's the same on this too. As some people might actually consider it a feature being able to click all the way back there. But I've never accidentally actuated mouse one and two. As you can see the there's no side flex. There's no top flex up here. The bottom flex is just a little bit but again you're not who's going to be pushing on the bottom of their mouse. Both of these mice have um, PTFE feet, and these are some of the nicer PTFE feet I've, I've felt on a mouse straight out of the box. There's very little reason to change those out, but they do, of course, make glass gates for these, and I'll actually be trying those out because I've ordered the FE edition of this mouse from Max Gaming, which is uh, the green version, and I might do a little video of that when I get it, hopefully in the next week or so. The V2 does come in several different colors, um, obviously white like this, and there's black, and then the red is exactly the same color as this one. And there's a green one, which is the one that I mentioned that, um, that I have on order. And then uh, Max Gaming also has a black and blue one, which I think looks really nice. So you have quite a few different colors and styles to fit your, uh, your setup. And here's a sound test. All right, here's the software for Pulsar. Very simple, very clean. You can change the uh, the mapping of the buttons right here. And you can see right here, I changed the uh, button four to the DPI loop. The debounce time I set to one milliseconds. It can go all the way down to zero. By default, it starts out at four. Battery life indicator right here. You got up to four different profiles. Right here is the DPI settings. 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and then the uh, DPI effect right here, you can set it to steady or breathing, which is that one little light that's on the bottom of the mouse. Mouse sensitivity here, scrolling, double click speed, uh, lift off distance I set to one millimeter, and of course the pulling rate, you wanna set that to a thousand hertz, and then you can set macros here, which I have not. Yeah, that's about it. Just real simple, basic. So anyways, guys, in conclusion, this Pulsar X-Lite V2 is an excellent Argo mouse. It's one of my favorite mice of all time. It's definitely in my top three. If you like Argo mice, this is definitely my highest possible recommendation. It's just very simple, basic. It doesn't have any stupid thrills that you don't need. It just performs really well. Awesome balance. Weight is perfect. Everything's solid. Shape is good. All the internals are great, and it comes in at $80, which is uh, amazing for what you get. This mouse definitely competes and bests quite a few mice that are over $100. So I think it's a great value, and Pulsar is just uh, doing a tremendous job. For such a young company and just being their fourth mouse release, it's pretty impressive. And I expect to see big things coming from them. They have a lot to live up to with this mouse, but 
I think the future is looking bright for Pulsar, and I'm definitely excited to check out the new Ambi. And then, of course, there's also a mini version of this mouse. So if you do like Argo mice, then this is just too big for you because this is definitely a uh, medium large size, I would say. So if you have smaller hands, the mini might definitely be worth checking out. I don't know if it's going to be priced the same, I would imagine. But definitely, um, if you've got small hands, the mini is, is worth checking out. I believe we should be seeing something in the next couple weeks on when the mini is supposed to be available, which I believe they said is April, and since it's April, so any time now. And if you're ordering uh, this mouse from their website, um, this mouse pad right here is the uh, uh, Pulsar Gaming Gears Paracontrol XL pad in red. Um, I did a review on it recently, so if you hadn't seen that yet, you can uh, check it out in the description or just go on my video list and you'll see that it was one of my recent videos. Uh, it's an excellent mouse pad and they have a, it's a control pad and you can also get it in black. And they also have a, a Kodora speed pad and then also a, um, a mud pad. Uh, I think they call it the para brake and the, uh, the Kodora ones, uh, uh, they call it the para speed. But this is definitely a, a nice control pad. It's one of my favorite. And the, uh, the other ones might be worth checking out. I may do a review on them in the near future if I can get a hold of them. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is I still am doing a, a giveaway. Uh, I've got um, three different mice I'm giving away. An in-game gear XM1R white edition, brand new in a box. A Razer Viper 8K and the TriHard Oni S wireless mouse, which is actually a, a really nice mouse. It's one of my favorite also. I also have it, this exact same mouse pad, brand new in a box, that I'll be giving away. And I also have a Ponage mouse pad that I'll probably be giving away too. And I may keep adding things to the giveaway. Uh, to enter, all you have to do is just uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter. I'll have the description of what you got to do in the comments. And if you leave a comment, you can tell me which um, item that you're most interested in. Maybe even just make a little tier from most interested to least interested. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this review informative and you enjoyed it. And hopefully I earned a sub from you today. And if I did, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. I got lots of great content coming out. And if you're already subbed, thanks for coming back and watching. I appreciate it. And if you like this video, you know, please leave a like. It helps with the algorithm to spread this video to more people. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.